What's up guys, it's your boy Nikki Rod, the Black Belt Slayer. Rodzilla, the villain killer. When I see a gorilla, I'll make the blood spill out. <laughs> Listen, today we have a topic of white belts, right? This is Ethan. Hello. This is Nikki Ryan. And together, we are BT. If I'm being honest with you, probably the most important aspect of being a white belt is your time, right? Time is something you can never get back once you expend it. And at B Team, we can make sure we maximize your time with the world's most effective and efficient techniques. White belt lives matter. You got one? Me? Yeah, I was gonna just talk about like, how I just broke a dude's like heel hooking him in the gi when I was a white belt on accident. Nice. You broke a guy's leg as a white belt? Yeah, so <laughs> I was doing like the, uh, the gi competition class and this is like just starting out. So like I had no idea that heel hooks were illegal in the gi, especially because at Gary's gym, he would allow us to do it in the gi still. So then I go to Henzo's and I'm doing the, the morning uh, competition class and I'm training with like another white belt and uh, I get him in an outside heel hook and like I don't rip it or anything, I go into it, but the guy had never seen a heel hook before so he doesn't know. So I just destroy this dude's nice. leg. Dude, it popped so bad. I thought it was like his gi tearing. So I thought that I like ripped his gi and it was just his ankle getting destroyed. Oh, Ooh. yeah. How old were you at the time? I was like 13. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah Spy girl man. Uh, he was like probably in his 20s. 20s yeah. yeah, yeah. I just had no idea he looks were illegal. He had never seen one before. So I just ended up breaking this white belt's <laughs> leg on accident. Jesus. Wow. I almost feel like now as a white belt, like it's pretty necessary to learn some leg locks. Right? Would you agree with that? Oh yeah, for sure. It's it's much better to learn it early on. That way, if you end up going into an advanced program, that way, mm -hmm. like you know what's happening, and you're not just mm -hmm. clueless. And end it's up much getting... better. It's much better that guy had his leg exploded by you in the <laughs> early days of his <laughs> career <laughs> than than later on when you know it. Uh... He sees the guy. Yeah, he sees he's like, yeah, that guy broke my he's leg ten years ago. He's ago. still in a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. I feel like there was a a like thought that leg locks were terrible because. They, people thought that assumed that everybody was going to get hurt and injured doing it, but it's kind of like what you said. If everybody learns them early on, then you kind of adapt and you know you know the defenses and whatnot. And I feel like it's something that uh, a lot of uh, teams have neglected. But here at B Team, you know, we uh, we appreciate the leg locks. We see the value in them. So you know, learning them early on would definitely have give the our white belts the upper hand against those other white belts, right? Because in life, it's all about competition, right? Even if you're not that competitive, you still probably want to win if you see another white belt, right? So yeah. I think le learning leg locks is something that we bring to the table that most other white belt programs don't. Yeah, I feel like uh, if you treat it like it's something that's dangerous and should only be learned later on, then it's gonna be dangerous because they're not exposed to it sooner. Like if you get white belts heel looking each other, I mean, you're. Yeah, you could argue you're gonna get injuries, but you're probably gonna get a lot more if they don't heel hook each other at all until like late into purple belt when they're already doing a lot of shit at a higher intensity, so. Cause it's like a lot of time with legs, the defensive guy turns the wrong way. Yeah, right? it's you like have to, to know how to defend it as well, or you have to know how to like sit in it and know when you're in danger and when to like chill and, you know? So, yeah. here at B Team again, like yeah, we're definitely gonna improve uh, sort of implement that sooner on so that they're not gonna get their legs exploded by 13 year olds you know when they come yes. into the pro class <laughs> later on so yeah we like to we like to teach them early here at b team yes what about you guys you guys have any white belt horror stories dude back in i've always had a dream that white belts and blue belts and black belts could all get together and work together in harmony and as if i'm thinking back to my white belt days I had pretty decent success with everything besides leg locks. I remember going into practice like, all right, I'm pretty good at, at defense, I'm pretty good at top stuff, but you guys would entangle my legs in practice. I'm like, what is happening here? It was so foreign to me. And uh, leg locks is necessary. So that was your your like nightmare. My kryptonite was yeah. was the was the leg of roots. The leg you guys would just yeah. tangle me up. I'm like. I, I just, honestly, there's a, a moment of panic. You're like, this guy's on my foot. I don't really don't know what to do. Like, if somebody's in an arm bar, I can usually just, like, shake them off. Mm -hmm. Obviously, now I'm a bit more technical, like, high, hitchhiker escape and whatnot. But, uh, yeah, dude, I feel like if you're new at the, the leggy stuff, it's, it's a bit tricky. Yes. Again, why it's super important to just 
get them going early because then you end up with Nicky Rod don't understand the leggy stuff until you know gives us a chance to hold on to your leg and tickle your feet and get something going. <laughs> Yo, so yeah. my tickles my feet on the mat, we're gonna have a problem. <laughs> I'm saying we're gonna take one back. I once saw a guy back at TriStar. He came in the gym with jeans and uh, tank top, like a tight, you know, white beater tank top, and he starts headbutting the bag to the point where he got. Uh, that's his warm up. He that, literally, that was his, his warm up was army crawls up and down the mat and headbutts on the bag. And uh, he was he started bleeding once. He was headbutting the bag so hard he starts bleeding. And uh, yeah, he just starts like training with everyone. And that, I wouldn't say that's a horror story. It's just like an interesting you know experience. One of my early early memories of of being like introduced to martial arts was seeing that. I'm like, yeah. what have I done? Where am I right now? So that was definitely a, what a, memorable. Yeah. <laughs> one of my first. Uh, one of the tougher rounds I had as a white belt at South Jersey Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, right, in South Jersey. You can sure you could have guessed it. Mm -hmm. uh, we had this, this like, visiting uh, brown belt, I believe, come in. And he comes into the class, and he's like, yeah, yeah I'm, a, I'm a professional. I, I compete and whatnot. I was like, oh, that's cool. And we start rolling, and I destroyed him. And it was, like, my second week of Jiu-Jitsu. And I was like, wow, this guy sucks. I should, I should keep doing this sport. And uh, I think soon after I, I started competing, I don't know how we got there, but newfound confidence. Newfound confidence. Yes. Yeah, maybe yeah. his belt just got dirty. It could have been. Yep. You know? Could have been dirty belt. We've seen dirty that a couple white times. Belt. Yeah, dirty white belt. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, Mr. Rodriguez, Mr. Ryan, what would you say are some great precautionary advice to the early white belts who, you know, they want to jump into the sport, but they don't want to get injured. They don't want to explode anything, you know, uh, staff wise, joint wise, ego wise. Hmm. What do you think? Yeah, so uh, one thing is I think white belts tend to go like way too hard in the beginning. You know, uh, people are super competitive, they don't want to lose. Um, <clears throat> so I think it's super important to have a coach that emphasizes like, hey, this is just experimenting, playing around and figuring things out. Um, so that's something that I think JV does very well. You know, before uh, every class, before he, uh, he goes into live training, he's like, listen guys, don't go crazy, um, you know, Take it light, play around. Uh, it's, it's just experimenting, learning, and, and trying to figure things out. Mm -hmm. I think that's a great point. Um, yeah, I, I feel like I had that too. I was like, from day one, I tried to go super, super hard. But honestly, it's harder to learn when you're trying, when your effort is like at 100, right? If you put that effort down, and you kind of take a little bit slower, and you see, you, you can kind of spot techniques. The interesting uh, part about jujitsu is that everything kind of flows together it's like you know you learn these bits and pieces that are kind of like scattered around and then once you get to a certain level of technique you notice that everything just kind of intertwines and flows together and that's really like the artsy part of our sport is, is that like you can have like lower body attacks upper body attacks wrestling and all of it just kind of is is the same thing right so it becomes one fluid motion yeah, I totally, yeah, like I, I really agree with you guys. Like, first of all, JB's doing a great job at like reiterating, you know, don't go crazy, slow it down. And yeah, it once you do slow it down, you're going to see like, let's say if you have like two or three moves to connect those two or three moves is going to give you like an exponentially larger uh, amount of, you know, technical resources to call upon when you're training. And you're really never going to get that if you just go full speed every time you're going to like... You're gonna keep your go-to game because that's the only thing I can do at full speed. So if I slow it down, like you guys are saying, then you can start to see the little like patterns of how this move applies in different places and how that move applies in different places. Like recognizing the patterns, what to do with your body, and yeah, you know, it's only gonna happen when you slow it down. So I think something that get that got me good really fast was um, getting a rock solid defense. I was like, if I can, if I can uh, gain confidence in defending these these movements. Then I had more confidence when trying to be offensive and begin attacking. So, like, I think if you're if you're starting out as a as a white belt, you know, try to get a rock solid defense before you look to attack. In addition, if we're talking uh, about common injuries, I feel like just knowing how to take a fall, or how to take a, a take, receive a takedown is very important, mm -hmm. right? You see some of these guys or like somebody on the street, they fall and they like stick their arms out and they break an arm or something like that. They fall weird. Knowing how to roll out, knowing how to break fall, mm -hmm. break fall and, and not just like, you know, accepting a takedown, but knowing how to sprawl and then receive one is uh, very important. It's something we, we, um, we put high up on the, on the, on the, 
high up. List of priorities? We put high up on the list of priorities here at B2G. It's beautiful. Yeah, uh, that's super important. Like adding to that, if you, if you really keep your ego with you, you're gonna wanna win every round and you're never really gonna be in those positions where you're learning how to fall. You're learning how to, you know, go with force that you can't stop. If I'm always beating up a guy, then I'm never really gonna have to like give. Like if a guy's better than me, he's gonna apply pressure to my leg. I'm gonna be like, okay, I have to go on the defense. If I don't really ever learn that, when it comes time, you know, I'm gonna eventually roll the guys better than me. I'm gonna try and resist in something that I shouldn't be resisting and I may tweak a joint or like fall harder than I want. Um, yeah, Nick, you, you've gone pretty pretty far in your career without any like major, major injuries. You know, I haven't had like major surgeries, you know, you're definitely, <laughs> <laughs> word. I don't know about that. <laughs> no, no, like they, they haven't been, you know, like exploding shoulders. For the first like six years of my for career was yeah. pretty injury free. And then, Relatively like, speaking, and then the for past, the time. like two, three years yeah. have been pretty rough. So ignoring those past two, but no, no, what I'm saying he's is at the highest it. level. Exactly, for yeah, the highest level, for years doing as much as you just can. Just like destroying my body. Dude, for the hours you've spent live, tra spent live training, hard rounds, not just like flow, like you, we rolled crazy hard back at Hanzo, it was multiple Puerto Rico, times a day. multiple times a day, and now here multiple times a day. That all coming together, you are definitely, I'd say we all, well, maybe not me, you guys definitely are super relatively injury free, so how do you do it? How do you stay, you know, training this hard, competitive, this far into your career, what do you do, what's the secret? Yeah, so, um, I mean, number one, I think is having good training partners that you trust. Uh, but another thing too, I think, is uh, positional rounds. Cause, uh, I yes, feel like yes, yes. It's a lot easier on the body than just doing like an hour straight of wrestling. You know, mm -hmm. I feel like that's that's pretty hard on the body. And if you do do that, you need to, you know, again, play around, not go 150% every single time. Um, <clears throat> so I do think positional rounds also help uh, prevent injuries. Cause you know, starting bottom mount, it's, it's pretty hard to get injured from that position. That's good, that's good. And it's, it's like, um Positional rounds personally got me good really fast because you're you're forced in these like little minute battles because like you might be mounted on somebody and yeah you have the goal of holding them down and preventing them from coming up but like there's still these little battles digging for the underhook trying to get your frames inside trying to get that knee elbow connection so uh, winning those little battles ultimately or have you'll have success winning the, the bigger battles yeah those positional rounds that's so good to talk about that like for. Avoiding injury and skill development like it puts you first of all like we always start with mat round I think that's super good on, on a so many levels like one it Kind of no, no impact no impact and it you warm up like as a white belt You don't really know how to like warm up properly So instead of doing you know run around and drills like you you go mount situation that teaches you some Technical things that you're never gonna you know you need to be put there You know you can yeah. you can drill as much as you want but you need to be put there and it kind of immediately takes out the ego because you're like right away in a very bad position. So you're like, you know, we're doing situation. It's not like he got me here. It's not like I ended up here. Um, so it gives you a chance to really warm up in a safe way, like you're saying, and it gives you a chance to highlight those positions. Like you need to know how to elbow escape. You need to know, and as a wrestler, you don't get like, no. the, not mount situations really happen a lot. Once you're pinned, the match is the match. You're is pinned, open. right? Who yeah. pins in, in mount? I mean, it's not as common as in jiu-jitsu, right? Yeah. So, so that's very good in that sense. And that's probably a, a good aspect of preventing injury too, just having a proper warm up, doing something yeah. like mounts round. To, that way, when you get to standing rounds or other rounds, you guys sweaty. are hot, sweaty, and you're good to go. Is there one piece of advice that a coach or somebody told you when you were coming up that stuck with you all the way through to now? Give up. <laughs> <laughs> Give, when it gets when it gets going gets tough, go home. You should quit. You should yeah. leave. <laughs> no, Did you pay I, your I, membership. <laughs> Honestly, um, advice that I think John gave this to me when I first started rolling uh, at, in the DDS in, in uh, back Hezo, in the day, back in the day in Hezo Grace in New York City, Manhattan, um, I was I would do a few rounds, I'd be gassed, and I'd take one off, and then I'd go back to it. And John was like, "Don't take rounds off. You see the other people taking rounds off? These are normies. These are normal people. You know, you don't want to be normal." It's like. You're right. Hey. Don't take no rounds off. Nice. So something like that, not taking rounds off, even like just because you're tired. Uh, granted, if you're rolling every day, you know it's okay to take you know maybe round three or four off or, or something. You know what if I mean? You're but a bitch. most days, most days you should do every single round. Typically, it's going to be six rounds. You know that's the way to do it. Something actually I heard recently. Something Damien told someone else, Jordan Syatt, uh, something on my podcast. Mm -hmm. um, he said stick with this 
for two years and you'll become addicted. Something along those lines. Maybe I'm like messing up the exact verbiage, but it's just like, it's kind of like if you're, you know, if you're just starting and you're wondering if this is for you, just, it's like anything in life, like really just give it a chance. Uh, so I guess what I would say to white belts out there, stick with it for two years and you're gonna be hooked, you're gonna be addicted. You're gonna get fucked up, you're gonna get your ass handed to you. It's gonna suck a little bit at first, but as you get through it, you're gonna start, you know, putting the heat on other guys. You're gonna start to understand how you can apply force and feel like you're stronger than people who are, who should be stronger than you. And you can understand how like the technical knowledge you get from jujitsu, from grappling, uh, is gonna take you a lot further and uh, it's motivating once you start to see that progression in yourself and we start to see your you're learning things and you get a feel for it You kind of really get addicted to it and then uh, and you end up here, you know as far as my personal progression I always saw Huge huge progression in about every six months like maybe I for six months or so I have like this stalemate where I feel like I couldn't it was hard for me to tell if I was getting better or not and then I I hit the I hit the end of that six months and I'd be like oh I'm getting really good so for me about every six months I was able to see progression so you know wait it out keep going to training and you definitely you definitely uh, see progress find the little little battles in the room you know like as a as a B team white belt it's gonna be tough in here it's gonna be mentally physically taxing but we promise you. It's gonna make the rest of your life so much easier if you can deal with the with the antics in here, right? You can get through physically. You can get. You have the ability to think clearly under under extreme stress, right? While you're in bottom out trying to escape, you're just you're dead tired, but you're still working. It's gonna make all other aspects of your life much easier. What's what's so yeah. interesting about like jujitsu is that it's very it is very selfish sport. You have a you have to have a, a good team, a great team behind you yeah. to help you, each other evolve and get better. Um, but one of the best things about this sport is that there's no no football team to be like, oh, oh you didn't do your part, that's why we lost. And, and there's a lot of blaming that goes on in like team sports. When you whether you lose or you win, it's Fun. all on you, man. You get to reap all of the reward, all of the glory because of the work that you did. So as as a bit of a selfish person, I appreciate a selfish sport. All right, guys, so there's a white belt program here at B-Team, but not everyone is gonna be, you know, aspiring to win ADCC. But why do you guys think it is still very valuable to come in and learn the skill and the art of grappling at a gym where we have actually professionals who do this for a full-time living? Why do you think that's important? <clears throat> Yeah, uh, I mean, I think there's multiple good reasons. Uh, I mean, number one, like the whole reason that I started jujitsu was just to help me get back in shape. You know, I was like super fat growing up uh, and I was literally the same weight at 13 as I am right now. Uh, and then I started jujitsu and I lost like, you know, close to 50 pounds uh, just doing jujitsu. Um, so obviously to get in shape is a good one. Another good thing is it just, it helps you with problem solving just throughout life. You know, all jiu-jitsu is, is just problem solving under stress. Uh, so I think it can be applied into, you know, many aspects of life. Um, you know, I feel like solving other problems is pretty easy compared to having, you know, solving a problem of a dude behind you trying to strangle you or a dude trying to break your arm. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think those are, you know, two very big benefits of training jiu-jitsu, even if you don't uh, plan on pursuing it as a professional career. Also just self-defense, you know, uh, like, I'm pretty sure we're all pretty confident that if we get into a street fight with an untrained person that we, you know, at least be able to handle ourselves and not just get absolutely destroyed. Hopefully. That's a, that's a great point. Great, great points. In my opinion, uh, to become a B-team white belt, right, a, a mighty whitey, um, we could... The thing is, like, if you're a B, if you're a BT white belt, right? if, you're, if you're a BT white belt, you're gonna be better than all other white belts, right? You get a white belt from B team, you get a blue belt from B team. You're gonna have the confidence to know that you're gonna beat all those other blues and whites out there, because a lot of times it's it's not. I'm just leave it at that. <laughs> a mighty whitey, mighty, whitey. mighty, mighty <laughs> tidy whitey. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, you guys really nailed it like I, I'm gonna agree just to add on like uh, it's first of all a great way to get in shape and even if you're already in shape try grappling you will see how actually you're not completely in shape like you are missing out on those cardiovascular and just full body cognitive physical benefits well I think I think cardiovascular is a great point because 
If you know anything, right? I'm not a doctor, but I I portray one sometimes. Anything you say is medical advice. And medical advice, exactly. So, um, car- having a superior cardiovascular system makes you live longer. You look at you look at old people. When I think of somebody that's 95, I'm like, bro, how's your cardiovascular system? He's like, they're oh, out there, dying. they're out there running marathons, right? Get your cardiovascular system up, and maybe live an, ex- an extra 10 years. And that's what we can do. B team jiu jitsu, B team white belt, make you live longer. B team jiu jitsu white belt program, you will live longer. I I think. I mean, again, I don't know about this being medical advice. Maybe a little disclaimer, but if you do jiu jitsu, I'm fairly confident in saying you will live longer except if you do it in an extreme way that we do maybe we're shortening our lifespan a little but you know just it'll make you healthier okay you're gonna see you know whether well, you cardio, run or heart health cardiovascular health yeah. is is a great indicator of of your longevity in your life so that's exactly yeah. it um and uh so yeah health wise nikki i mean look at what a transformation it used to be <laughs> You know, I'm not gonna anyway. So yeah, <laughs> get in shape. Uh, go from fat scooter kid to Nicky Ryan as he is now, yes. right? Um, and it's also just like in terms of getting in shape. Like yeah, we can go to the gym and run and bike and this and that. But it this is this is fun. Like you do this, you try and like you said, like get a guy off you and bottom out. Like that's that's a puzzle with physical exertion added to it. So it's it's a fun brain involved skill where you're working your body you're sweating make sure to shower after yeah um and uh what was the other one in terms of look all all walks of life if you want to be at the top of your field be a competitor learn to be the best of what you do and jujitsu whether you're going to be the best in the world or not it's going to teach you how to get better with each step like get better than the guys around you learn what they're doing learn how to beat them uh, problem solving under stress. My realization is that jujitsu, grappling, wrestling, the grappling art has been around since the beginning of time. You look at the first Olympics, it is a very primal thing to be able to take an, an opponent, a man standing in front of you, put him down against his will, hold him down, and make him say, I quit, I don't want to do it anymore. So that's what we can provide to you. Become a BT white belt, and just about anybody you come across in the world, you're gonna be able to put them down against their will, which is if every primal, it's instinctual. When I think of dominance, I think of jiu-jitsu, I think of the ability to make an opponent quit. B-team jiu-jitsu, if you guys want to become a mighty whitey, the, the highest ranking white belt that has ever lived, you got to become a part of the squad, become the part of the B-team. Listen, we can provide you the highest quality of technique, become technically sound, become effective, efficient, and become a dominator. If you're a fat kid like me, come through to B-Team Jiu-Jitsu and we'll get you back in shape. Look guys, I don't care if you're 20, 50, 30, 80, 90, come to B-Team, we'll get you good at grappling. You're welcome. Yeah, so, um, I mean, number one, I think is having good training partners that you trust. Uh, you know, like, like us, right? Yeah, not 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 either one of you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the two top spazzy guys and the least spazzy. Guys. I can't believe Craig and you guys declared us as the top spazzy. Yeah, yeah. what is That's this? Can we speak about this for some? This is. I feel personally offended. And I feel personally also sorry. personally. Offended. Yes, this yeah. is. We should stand up to this. You, you guys think just because I'm fast, heavy. Strong, handsome, good looking, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. well endured, <laughs> huge brain, yeah, yeah. <laughs> strong, well endured, handsome, handsome? Big brain. <laughs> right Did we get, yeah. Is that you? I think they're just jealous of us. Honestly, I need to see a script of what defines somebody as a spaz. Yeah, because there's there. Yeah, I, look I feel in the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We need objective numerical metrics here because yeah. we are so. I think precise. more of a spaz than you, but you're just more dangerous because you're bigger. Yeah, I'm. I'm bigger. I am. But I'm in more control. I'm like. I'm just. I just go with the flow. I go left. That's right, what I down. do. I go left, right, left, exactly like that. Up and down, diagonal. But back to the point. Yeah, having training partners that you know aren't gonna be jumping close guard, hitting flying Kani Vasamis, things like that. 
picking you up and then slamming you as hard as they can. I would oh, never give it up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, What's worse, picking you up and dropping or picking up and <laughs> fucking... <laughs> They're both pretty bad. You I know what's you, know what's what, you can't jump? You pick them up and you let them down nice. Bro, yeah. I'm not going to hurt my back lower. You're not supposed to get lower weight. <laughs> Everyone tells you lift explosively and then you let the weight go and you deadlift. Mm. I'm doing the same thing. Yeah. What, you never like jumped? You're doing a technical drop. Yeah. A tactical, technical, release the tension. Delevation. Delevation, but Delevation. Delevation. Wow. Simple. 